tarde a todos. É um enorme privilégio para mim, como diretor do, do SES e como também coordenador do projeto Alice, de dar as boas-vindas ao professor Modimba. O professor Modimba não é de maneira nenhuma um desconhecido nesta casa, já esteve connosco, tem relações uh, científicas e profissionais com muitos uh, dos presentes aqui e, e portanto, é uma, é uma pessoa que nós temos realmente, com quem temos já muito contacto e que uh, para nós é realmente um privilégio tê-lo hoje aqui. Ele uh, vem por um período uh, até muito mais extenso do que é normal, portanto, estudantes que quiserem contactar com ele, é uma questão de contactarem uh, com a minha colega Maria Paula Menezes, que está a coordenar um pouco essa parte, ele está aqui ao abrigo do projeto Alice e do doutoramento de pós-colonialismos e cidadania global. Uh, vai no, na quinta-feira, aqueles que uh, conhecem o Alice vai fazer uma conversa do mundo, aqueles que viram a minha conversa do mundo com uh, Leonardo Boff, que está na página do Alice, vamos fazer na próxima quinta-feira uma conversa do mundo com o professor uh, Mudimba. Uh, o professor Mudimba não precisa de apresentação, de todo modo, é um dos grandes intelectuais do mundo, é aquilo que a gente pode dizer hoje, uh, com uma experiência vastíssima, uh, em que é difícil de classificar. Com os grandes intelectuais é difícil de classificar. Ele é, obviamente, um filósofo, uh, mas é também um romancista, uh, é um crítico literário, é uma personalidade que tem tido uma atividade de extensa e intensa relação com a psiquiatria, com a doença mental e, portanto, e com comunidades terapêuticas, com uma vasta tradição de estudos em França, depois nos Estados Unidos, ainda hoje está baseado na Universidade de Duke, mas, de facto, é uma pessoa que hoje viaja por muitas universidades. Ainda há pouco tempo, Uh, hoje, muito parte das coisas a que ele vai assistir uh, são uh, colóquios sobre a sua obra, como agora estávamos a conversar, como fez recentemente em Paris, uh, e como também anteriormente eu estive em Dakar, numa reunião organizada pelo, pelo CODESO e, e por outras organizações africanas do Mali, uh, para uh, estudar durante dois dias uh, o, o conceito fundamental de um dos seus livros da Biblioteca Colonial. Portanto, a, a, o professor Mudimbe é essa referência a, nos estudos, sem talvez a, a, se permitir a ser facilmente classificado nas diferentes escolas, como vão ter a oportunidade de ver. Portanto, eu sinto-me muito feliz hoje por dar as boas-vindas ao professor Mudimbe. A vossa tela tem a professora Mudimbe, é um grande honra. Eu acho que tudo é tudo, porque eu sei que você fala várias línguas. We even consider the hypothesis that Professor Mudin would speak in Spanish. He could also speak in French. He could speak, he could speak in French, and he could speak. And I think next time he'll speak in Portuguese. So uh, uh, it's great pleasure. It's a great honor. And uh, please, the floor is yours. The, 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 the system is going to the, be the usual one. Professor Mudin is going to speak. You must tell them uh, for 45 uh, minutes or an hour, whatever he wants. And then uh, it will be followed by debate. So, as, as usual in our sessions, it's being played and it's being also uh, in streamlined, right? For the in streaming for a larger group of people in different parts of the world want to uh, attend this lecture, but they are not with us here. So, it is being sent to them as we speak. Please, watch this. Thank you. Thank you very much uh, to you, to the organization of this project. Uh, thank you uh, to uh, Professor uh, Maria Paula Meneses uh, and uh, to all the people involved in uh, uh, this uh, project. And the presentation. Uh, Uh, Professor uh, Boratura de Sousa Santos uh, was uh, presented, in fact, uh, a first time uh, to uh, the Ecole Normale Supérieure Rue Dune, the first week uh, 
of uh, June Elon uh, also a dedication to a former professor of mine, in fact, uh, a Belgian uh, uh, professor, Monstray, to which the text uh, is uh, dedicated uh, and uh, is to be published uh, in a book uh, to come out in uh, the coming weeks in South Africa. Uh, the question of uh, the presentation is about uh, a question. It comes down uh, to a reaction from where exactly do you speak? Uh, the question uh, was clear and uh, seemed uh, odd, yet it was opening a window. It uh, didn't seem to have a connection uh, to a lecture on technicalities concerning alterity and some of uh, the enlightenment paradoxes uh, on human nature. Yet, uh, the question seemed uh, concerned with uh, the origin of uh, a speech, my speech, and uh, to a response uh, that uh, referred uh, to uh, sources uh, from the French tradition, uh, the question reformulated itself differently and uh, seemed to focus on filiations. In other words, uh, the same issue uh, something like uh, a polite confrontation was taking place and was focusing on how a particular claim in uh, our discipline and uh, a universal one can stand in uh, the same effort, technically. This uh, seemed a minor aspect uh, of uh, my presentation, in effect, if uh, a belief uh, in uh, the singularity of a subjective voice was the problem, it was posited uh, from Claude Lévi-Strauss, Kantism without a transcendental subject. This evaluation of Paul Ricoeur accepted by Lévi-Strauss himself. Then, an elegant exit and from uh, the now a part tension was to bring in uh, the issue of uh, liberty and uh, involve Jean-Paul Sartre being a nothingness and uh, the idea of uh, liberty. Standing in a corner, the, the speaker seemed to be challenging something else. How many people were present in uh, this uh, conference room? Uh, possibly one, uh, but uh, perhaps more. It doesn't matter. A way of combining a politeness and uh, a commitment uh, was uh, to go dialogical. In effect, then, it uh, doesn't uh, raise eyebrows. On uh, liberty of translation and uh, concerning non-Western cultures, a parole can convey conditionals vis-à-vis -vis the abstract reality of a language and accent its relative aspects. This response uh, seemed to, to relax the atmosphere and the conversation took on an expected academic uh, routine. Years after this experience, it still stands as a good case to be used in order to problematize manners of inscriptions in a discipline and in a tradition versus manners of affirming a presence in the discipline. In other words, here is a parole reflecting on its own faithfulness to both a land our common language, and uh, its own liberty, a parole, a way of apprehending its own practice in uh, the discipline as a statement within a intercultural and a transcultural space. To remember this happening, translate a reading in a doubt, 
a picture under its uh, uh, patterns and preserve and something that resembles a text and a hidden a series of ideas to be apprehended. There are two entries. On the one hand, the picture of being a migrant in relation to a Jean-Paul Sartre a philosophy, and the intellectual atmosphere that can be reconstructed. On the other hand, the conviction uh, of uh, being also a full citizen uh, in a, a tradition and uh, testifying to this tradition from the solidity of uh, its own legacy and uh, in uh, the Greek language. Did the, what was uh, being perceived then correspond to the image that has been imposing itself now to me within a recollection that attempts to reactualize in an intellectual climate. A subject is a discriminating facts from sets of sentiments and a directing a meaning, objectively determining the topic of the presentation and consequently a manner of engaging one's own inscription in our common discipline. One, a reading of a crucial point and other genealogy is in competing positions. Two, a discerning of politics of reading from today's political engagement and their implications in alterity representations about who is what in humanities and social sciences today. Three, facing explanations about the history of a variety of cultural practices in reading. A Greek norm commands ways of commenting about the said and the usual unsaid in philology and in philosophy. It states an unconditional obedience to what texts command in their own linguistic expression. In sum, we should all be speaking Greek and uh, Latin. <laughs> there is no sufficient reason not uh, to submit uh, to such a basic requirement, uh, to accept uh, such an angle and uh, recollect the scene of confrontation I've been alluding to might bring uh, to easily dissociations in terms of cultural registers in uh, our common discipline. And uh, a decent way uh, could translate also this whole affair in terms of uh, analogic experience to matters of faith and uh, its uh, variations apropos what Paul Tillich in Dynamics of Faith refers to as a distorted intellect, commitment, emotion. There are at least three interacting lines that uh, a consciousness has been facing. There is first a reality that one would uh, designate under the name of uh, an African question in uh, relation to ongoing uh, globalizing theories and uh, processes. In effect, uh, it is a reality commented upon in terms of three factors an acceleration of history and epistemological direction that has been determined by both colonial measures and uh, a, an alphabetical revolution. In fact, uh, we go to school uh, to learn from Western grades. Uh, they refer to an intellectual uh, uh, reliance on economics and uh, social sciences. They orient cultural exegesis. This way uh, is 
uh, a way of uh, affirming uh, finally lines of faithfulness uh, to demands and lines of reflecting on uh, functions. Not inscribing modalities, uh, the perspective uh, made me somehow an unbelievable, unbeliever in uh, uh, economics and uh, in social sciences signatures. In effect, uh, fundamentally, they are arguments uh, supported by uh, mathematical renderings <laughs> from uh, dominant figurations. This is uh, to say simply that through hypothesis, in effect, applied mathematics are hypothetical projections issued forth from fundamentals. Nothing else. People are impressed by mathematical figures. Often uh, these uh, are representations and uh, are mystifying projections in uh, power relations. Then the prescriptions turn uh, in the sense of both a devotion and uh, its metaphorical values that is a social accord. Enclosed within another code uh, by way of a critique of the mathematical understanding and uh, its social science projection, a case in testimony and uh, dependence imposed itself uh, an induced anger that led to l'autre face du royaume of 1973. Its frustration might seem excessive to me today. On the other hand, the critique still rings a uh, uh, right. Now, let's reflect on uh, the discipline uh, itself. A number of things uh, should be uh, distinguished. In the language of uh, Franz Kray, to whom uh, this uh, document uh, is uh, dedicated, a philosophy is a discipline and the philosophy has a cultural history. The affirmation raised a number of issues at stake, disputes. One, what is with Kaye the problem about being dispossessed and colonized and lectured and sermonized about this science? And two, dispute about what is politically implied in a necessary distinction uh, between knowledge and uh, systems. In the language of transcribe, one is uh, reading a tension between a system of knowledge and uh, its opposite, uh, an expectation in a scientific uh, knowledge. Crae faces a pedagogical uh, demand for grounding a right to knowledge and a right uh, to uh, discipline. Here is uh, an approach uh, to a matter of uh, uh, distinction. That is a matter concerning a rational way of knowledge, a science in the most general sense of the word, uh, to quote metaphysics of uh, Aristotle. This definition opens also the entry on philosophy in uh, the French La Lande Dictionary of uh, Philosophy and, uh, on the other hand, designate a concrete practice of the discipline as it was illustrated by uh, the approach of Crae. The Lalan definition has the merit of clarity. One may relate to it uh, the practice of uh, uh, history and uh, think of uh, contributions uh, of uh, Joseph Kizerbo and uh, that of uh, a number of people, including the Jesuit Angelberg Vang. But 
let's go to the essential. Uh, here is a discipline, and uh, that's one thing. It is to be situated within a history and uh, its tradition that go back to the Greeks. One would accept uh, this discipline in the way it is, uh, as a matter of fact, uh, like biology or physics, for instance, philosophy is a science and an object of study conditioned by a cultural history that should be respected. It has its own requirement and absolutely, absolutely nothing prevents the discipline from adapting itself to non-Western contexts. Here is the definition that Crae suggested in his 1965 interventions on the condition for a non-Western philosophy, for the conditions of an African practice of philosophy. Philosophy, he says, is a reflection presenting precise characteristics. It is explicit, analytical, radically critical and autocritical, systematic at least in principle, and nevertheless open, bearing on experience, its human conditions, signification, as well as the values it reveals. And the Crane proceed with the presenting a number of uh, conditions for uh, a philosophical take of one, uh, the existence of body, a body of uh, African philosophers living in an intellectually stimulating cultural milieu open uh, to the world. Three main propositions uh, interact in this first condition. One, a body of practitioners to a framework of uh, a work, uh, a tree, and openness. Conditions can be evaluated uh, from the number of uh, existing today, thousands of uh, philosophers. Number two, a good and uh, a critical use of uh, external philosophical reflectors, uh, which, uh, through the patience of the discipline, would promote in Africa a cross-cultural thought. Uh, the issue should be related to the first condition. But Krain used Spinoza, Spinoza relation to the Jewish tradition as a model. Let's be clear. Briefly, in a philosophical practice, a reflector inspires an orientation. It doesn't necessarily determine it. The relation of Spinoza to Descartes is one thing. Another thing is uh, in Spinoza's way of relating himself existentially to the Jewish tradition. Three, from the preceding, uh, an analogy can be constructed about the relation of uh, an African philosopher uh, to Christian spiritual tradition. One uh, could even suggest, uh, for instance, that an African relation to Benedict of Nuxia rule or to Ignatius of Loyola's spiritual exercises or to Karl Marx who could determine styles in inscription and uh, indeed in philosophical expression. Three, a selective and a flexible inventory of African values be the attitude, categories or symbols uh, which uh, would uh, possibly uh, provoke a thought in the sense proposed by Paul Ricoeur. Of all the conditions mentioned so far, this one has been uh, the most explored and uh, often abused, uh, even in Africa. One move goes to the number four, a clear dissociation of reflective consciousness and for mythical consciousness, which would imply and uh, amplify major contrast, uh, subject versus uh, object, I versus the other, nature versus supernature, sensible versus metaphysical. 
this contributed directly to the debate on ethno-philosophical, ethno-philosophy, over the main point and in academic history of African philosophy, one note here, a paradox. The best known and the most quoted works in history of African philosophy, African philosophy are works by Westerners in English, Barry Allen and Yance, and in French, two Belgian ecclesiastics Fathers Alphonse Smith and Jean-Marie Van Paris. Let's move to the last condition, an examination of African intellectuals' main temptations, choices of philosophical systems apparently in accordance with urgent African needs, as in the case of Marxism and a cult of alterity which despite its respectable objectives, might become an end in itself. One should dissociate things here. Thus, for instance, a first orientation so that from lines of beliefs and from alterity principle, a been actualizing project for a cultural difference in authenticity. It led to a disastrous political mystification in the Congo and in Togo. Second, a trend that has been using explanations from Marxist arguments in order to account for a difference in the political economy of a worldwide modernity. The two trends can be confused, cannot be confused. <coughs> One would add a third that the post-colonial city has never been really submitted to a Marxist vocation. The anti-colonial rhetoric has been engaged mainly in a questioning of colonial prerogatives from a critique of its uh, policies. The short-lived African Association of Marxists might be its uh, best uh, illustration. One can reduce the problematic of questions and the definition suggested by Craig. More, a bit more than 50 years ago, one can reduce them into a few conclusive uh, issues. They would include the following. An emphasis on the tension between reason and unreason instead of the will to truth is criticized and often reduced to presuppositions of relativism. This critique ignores a political perspective. It ignores what uh, the view is transcending. And these are arguments uh, apropos a history of natural law and uh, the instrumentalization in uh, the 19th century in colonial uh, project. And to an emphasis on intertextual commentary and on the discipline would be seen as a lack of originality in history and in philosophy. This critique ignores often that the discipline are a perpetual recommencement of what they have been exploring themselves and justify and often bias this critique ignored the, the history and uh, the exercise of philosophy is a perpetual recommencement. And uh, finally, an uh, emphasis on uh, a fellowship of discourse and uh, not of doctrine would be a sign of apostasy or of uh, an African incapacity to integrate an intellectual tradition and assume its conditions philosophically and uh, philologically. The other side would be that the inscription should be read as a poverty in thinking independently from uh, models. The critique 
ignores and that uh, both the fellowship of discourse and doctrine, whatever it is, both demand and obedience. In Kant, and uh, the problem of metaphysics, Heidegger makes a good point when he writes this. Really, exegesis must to show what doesn't stand in uh, the universe and uh, is nevertheless said. Thus, we create, we recreate, and uh, we comment on uh, what we have received. Jean Poussin de Santé uh, suggests in an introduction to phenomenology that the philosopher is uh, simultaneously the last born and uh, the first recited. He gathers what is there and uh, inaugurates the expression of uh, logos of meaning and quote. The last born is an inscription by his own parole. Uh, the prospect stands for evocation. The subject declines himself, herself, as a logos that preceded its own experience. The recitant reflects a legacy and within these positions in the house, inscriptus inscripta, the last born, identifies with the recitant and Kant, but to be the one written upon and who recommences the experience of one's own reason in the past and in the present of the discipline. My past is Greek and uh, is not only Greek. My past is African and uh, is not only African. My present uh, is African. In conclusion, uh, to comment on uh, this uh, strange approach to a practice of the discipline, an illustration uh, my to give force into the definition I suggested to you, inspired by the practice of phenomenology and by Jean Poussin de Santé. A picture of the presentation of the Virgin in the temple, Salzburg, Abbey of Saint Peter. It goes back to <coughs> more or less 10, 50. And uh, it makes me conclude uh, this presentation. The picture presents a genesis. The Virgin Mary seems an adult. She is not the child of the foundational sagas of a conquering faith. This doesn't really matter. A story of faith is there a question and a useless one, probably. And culturally, in effect, the young woman, like her mother, is completely detached from the Jewish origin of what allowed her story and the representation that is here. I wrote my possible consolation. Something else states an absolute. It is credible and uh, divided the reflected in uh, the picture is reflecting itself and uh, it is negating and uh, fulfilling uh, the condition, the contingent, the contingent a uh, condition of uh, its uh, uh, presentation. The presentation, in effect, testifies to a time and uh, its inscription in uh, an acculturated past that uh, is not mine. And today, uh, it may symbolize the very dimension of uh, its own conflicting interpretations uh, from uh, my reading. This here are four lines. They are visible, and uh, that's the beauty of the represented one. Here is uh, this a cipher. 
in its own distinction. Two comes in a discipline painting that brings about the wonderful metaphor of Dante. I would like you to pay attention to it about this woman elected to be called the mother and the daughter of her own son, Dante, reciting centuries before the definition suggested by Desanti. Three, the Christian parable is a magnificent rendering of a measure for any philosophical promise to be the recitant of one's own voice and in perpetual contradiction and in perpetual recommencement. The presentation tells of how to look at oneself and simply as a beautiful and original narrative. I thank you very much. <laughs>